2,000 feet. Maybe it's the thicker air, or the extra oxygen, or the party atmosphere, whatever. We're beginning to feel nearly human again. I thought I hung around here long enough to get a cup of tea. On the scrunch. Yeah, I'm on the scrunch, believe me. I'll do anything for it. You never know. You wait long enough, the patience will be rewarded. Some hosts. I never did get my cup of tea. Soon there's a huge crowd circling the prayer pole at the center. Charles has his own ideas as to what this is all about. I don't think, Mark, this is a Buddhist festival at all. It's something much older. What we're seeing here is a spring festival, a fertility ceremony. And it goes back to pre-Buddhist Tibet to a folk religion called Bon. The earliest religion of Tibet was Bon, and the stronghold of Bon was out here in Western Tibet. This ceremony almost certainly goes back 2,000 years to the Bon Kingdom of Shangshung, which later became the legend of Shangri-La. There are Buddhist trappings here, certainly, like the music, and you have monks who've come from a nearby monastery, but this isn't really a Buddhist festival. We walk around the pole with Lama Tensing. He may look like a Buddhist in his monk's robes, but he's not. He's a Bon Lama. He belongs to the old religion of Tibet and believes, like Charles, in the legend of Shangri-La. <laughs> Above us, forbidden to our camera, is the place where for a thousand years the dead have been taken for sky burial, to be eaten by vultures. The idea really is that um, nothing is wasted, um, no natural resources are used up. Mere ecological way of um, being disposed of, it seems Well, it is in a way, it's very good, but on the other hand, I mean, how do they bring the, how do, how do they bring the bodies up here? I mean, how long have they been dead? I mean, no they idea. I mean, every single bit is, is, is smashed <laughs> right. up, they, even the bones. Yeah, they, they, they use knives to flay off all the flesh, yeah. and then they use... Um, uh, Hammers. Pestles, I suppose, uh, to um, break down the, the bones. And it is a horrific experience, obviously, to, see, to hear your relatively being chopped up, get to work on it very quickly. It's violent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ceremony moves to its climax. The excitement is contagious. The gentleman wearing a red silk lampshade is the master of ceremonies. He has to ensure that the 100-foot prayer pole is raised perfectly. If the pole should fall or break or fail to stand exactly vertical, it's a terrible omen for the coming year. hideous moment, it looks as if the great pole is going to snap. But with a huge effort, they heave it into place. It's upright, as it should be, and all's well that can be for Tibet for the next 12 months. The ceremony's over. Now, Lama Tensing can show us the way to the Garuda Valley. 
Hidden deep in that valley, as Charles believes, is Shangri-La. We drive west over the vast, timeless Tibetan steppe towards the Garuda Valley. We've now been in this desolate land for two weeks, a land home only to a few wild creatures, the shy and elusive antelope, the ever-circling Lamagaya, and a few scattered bands of nomads. This is a hard place, a country that shows no mercy, yet surrounded by unexpected beauty. To survive here, you have to believe that nature is all-powerful. We break our journey by dropping in on some unsuspecting